Uh, do you want to be called Twirl Fisher, or is it Twirl Booker Fisher? You just call me Twirl. I am I am the artist formerly known as Twirl Booker Fisher. <laughs> you can Excellent. just call me Twirl. <laughs> My mom calls you Twirl. Oh, that's fine, too. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Someone upstairs suggested that I could be called Aracat from now on. Oh, I'm that's like, adorable. Yeah, I want to be Aracat. That's, <laughs> that's my real name. <laughs> I love it. Super funny. Okay. Okay. So, welcome to In the Act, a radio program on process and the creative life. Creativity does not just start and stop with artists. We all make aesthetic and guiding decisions. Our aim is to talk through the process and investigate how we choose to express ourselves and live creatively. We are connecting with people about their lives. That is the subject of our show. Broadcasting from Mead Public Library in Sheboygan, Wisconsin on Mead Community Radio, I am Erica Hunsinger, and this is In the Act. Today's guest on In the Act is Toral Fisher. Welcome, Hi. Toral. Thanks for having me, Erica. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> We're very excited to have you. <laughs> um, we wanted to, you know, we wanted to have you on the show because. Um, I mean, I, I follow you on Facebook too, but I've been to your art exhibits at your home and you're prolific and you're always engaged in these amazing things. Like just dynamic is kind of like the, the first word that comes to mind when I think about you. And so I just was hoping that maybe you could share a little bit about your, um, I don't know, trajectory of your creations or creative life with us? Trajectory. Something? Does, uh, I don't sure, know. Sure. Well, when you say trajectory, that means I should have a goal, and I really don't have a goal. Great point. Other than being joy-filled and expressive. Um, but my life as an artist mirrors um, when you said the word dynamic, correct? Yeah. Um. I'm a different person every day. I wake up and I'm not the same person that I was the, the day before. And embracing that within myself is something that um, comes through on my canvas. There's one day, there's some days where I need to paint. I have a painting that is within me and it's disturbing to the extent that I cannot do anything else other than to put it out on the canvas. And normally those are my social justice pieces, um, wow. my divine ambiguity, um, redefining the sacred was um, I was really working through a lot of what is going on in our world, what is going on in our country. It has a lot to do with COVID. It had a lot to do with Black Lives Matter. It had a lot to do with the immigration issues that we're facing. Yeah. And these paintings have to come out. I have no choice. And I have to get them out. It's almost like a therapy uh, uh, work for me. With the... Mm, with not even knowing who the audience is going to be. It's for one, it's for me at that point. Um, and then I put it out on social media and I put it out on my um, website and whoever needs to connect with it at the time can. And then there's other times where um, I'm just joyful and colors dictate where I'm going to do that day. And mm -hmm. I'm a very, I'm, if you look at my work, I'm not, I don't usually do man-made like buildings and structures. I find them to be too rigid and too geometric. I like yeah. the flow of um, the natural world of flowers and of, of um, the forest. So you wouldn't see a lot of structures and straight lines in my paintings. Cool. Wow. I'm I'm still stuck on the um, I'm a different person every day and like embracing that and moving towards joy, yeah. and that's such a, a profound statement. Kind of caught me. <laughs> oh well, I believe truly that we evolve through joy and adversity. Yeah. And what we do with that is our choice. I mean, I don't believe that we choose adversity. Right. But I believe it it doesn't happen to us, it happens for us, right? Yeah. So that's your opportunity to say what am who am I going to be at this moment and how am I going to learn through this suffering? 
Um, Because if we look back at suffering within your, your, the context of your life, you're a better person for it. You still might be struggling and you can't see that, but I believe that distance gives you that lens of, okay, I'm a better person. I'm stronger. I'm more resilient. And I believe that you, there will be a point in your life if someone hurt you or if some, or something uh, caused harm to you emotionally or uh, physically, and you've risen through that, you, you know your healing is done when you can turn around and not necessarily thank the person, but thank that, thank, say thank you to that experience because hmm, yeah. you're stronger. Right. And you know yourself more fully. That's true. Yeah. Or you can. Right. Yeah. You might not ever get there. You might not right. ever be able to say thank you. And that's okay, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's such a process. I mean, and that, that process is a creative process. That's sort of like moving with the flow of what um, is occurring, like the experiences and then um, not fighting against that. Right. but accepting that this is where things are and um, and and finding your footing within those diffi- potentially difficult spaces as well as joyful. Well said, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for getting me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm, it's so, ex- it's really... Um, I have to bring myself down a little bit because I was so excited to have you here. I'm like, (laughs) so I want to like, you know, sit into some more of the the, uh, ideas that you're kind of bringing forth. And um, do you think, can you talk a, a little bit about like where those inspired or where those, um, where you learned about those ways of being or was it like just... Um, that's a really good question where I learned about those ways of being. I think my affect has always been one of um, forgiveness and one of always finding the beauty within others, regardless of um, the situation, always finding the opportunity to find the good and to find the beauty. And that's kind of getting into my Divine Ambiguity series. Um, as we look at, listen to the news and listen to podcasts and read the paper, um, there's a lot of fear in our world that's being perpetuated, a lot of hate, a mm-hmm. lot of discrimination. Yeah. And my choice within the Divine Ambiguity series specifically was to celebrate those people who are being discriminated against or people who are being um, we're, that we're being told to be fearful of immigrants, etc. And I painted those um, specifically with gold halos around them Mm -hmm. because I truly believe we can find God in everyone. We can find God in people that we um, perhaps disagree with. We can find beauty in people that we disagree with. And I think we need more of that because we're all in we're all doing this earth experience together right we're all in this together right and so um i don't know if i answered your question no but, yeah but um i don't know if i necessarily have a moment where i could pinpoint that that is who i'm going to be i believe that i i don't know my affect is something that i've always been born with i just yeah. I just don't let things get to me. I just don't have time for it. You know, I just interesting. I just yeah. don't. I don't choose that. I could choose otherwise, and sometimes I do. Sometimes sure. I get angry or, or you know, or yeah. frustrated. Um, but then, when I'm ready to solve it, I have to figure out how is this serving me. Interesting. What? That's such an interesting process. That's a new little life cycle yes in yes. in my head you know i see like tadpole <laughs> frog legs <laughs> frog like yeah. at this like sort yeah. of life cycle of yeah. like that that's the process for you that 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 can go through that right. cycle right um yeah yeah it's um it works for me and I know everyone is different, but it works for me. And I believe that um, that tool of having my art in 
my life allows me maybe to cycle a little bit faster because I have that outlet. Ah, yeah. I'm also a runner, and that's very important to me as well. That's my I'm a moving meditator, so oh. you know I can't sit still for a moment. <laughs> so um, I'm always moving. Yeah, and that's important. What does um, what does running do for you? You said it's running meditation. It clears my mind. Yeah, and then there's some times when I'm running. There's someone who I need to think about, and I spend that entire time. I'm surprised I haven't gotten hit by a car yet, quite frankly. Oh I'm my not gosh! Not early. You know how you get you get to your driving, and you don't know how you got to where you are. Oh sure. So, so kind of like having that moment, that flow. But yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I I typically can get that in running as well. So, so running and painting, you can find flow. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Um. Can you talk a little bit about your um, what your medium is sure. for our audience so they can kind of get a, a visualization about sure. what you're... Sure. Well, I'm a, I'm a painter. I was trained, actually, um, in oils, so I had to learn all the classic processes and old-fashioned processes <laughs> of how in, using rabbit skin glue. Oh, that's right. Do you remember that? Yeah, you I totally been exposed do. exposed to that? Yeah, Whew. I was. Yeah, as a vegetarian, I was very upset. I had a I, rabbit I guess I at haven't processed that yet. I'm still mad. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Poor little rabbits. But anyway, and stretching canvases and such. But I learned in oils, and I found them to be um, highly effective until I had children. And then my children wanted to touch my paintings. And if you've ever worked with oils, they don't dry. Oh. Some of them can take up to six months to dry. And I said, well, I guess mommy's got to find a different thing to do. So I embraced acrylic paints. And uh, I do like the acrylic paint medium simply because it's so forgiving. It dries so fast. And if you don't like what you see, you just you just paint on over it. Um, I used to be a standard, uh, you know, let's go ahead and make and take this white canvas and paint on it. But I got bored with that. So I no longer use a white canvas. I actually gesso, and for our listeners today, gesso means you're actually prepping your canvas to receive the paints. You're impregnating the cotton fibers of the canvas and giving it the acrylic paint something to adhere to. So I you and so, and so that's the, the paint doesn't bleed into the canvas itself, right? Well, into the cotton if it leaf. doesn't bleed, and it also it's like building a tooth, like as you would sand something before you're going to paint it. You're yeah. building like a tooth for it to stick. So, um, but uh, I got bored with doing it on white, and so now I use black gesso. And so when you look at my work, you'll see where there's black is actually where I haven't painted. So I'm I'm finding the negative spaces already in the canvas when I look at it. So if you do look at my pieces, if you have the opportunity to see them, it, it's kind of fun. You have yeah. to think in reverse. And it is. It was super challenging. Oh, yeah. But I got bored doing it the other way. And sure. So, and I really like the the effect that it gives. It almost sometimes, if you look at my, my specifically my older work, it almost has a stained glass or a woodcut look to it. And I really like the energy that that brings to the canvas and the play of color that that brings. So, cool. yeah. So I, I always say I'm painting backwards but yeah I'm, I'm i'm getting younger too so i'm evolving backwards <laughs> excellent benjamin button <laughs> exactly <it>. <laughs> well you know it it seems like your process actually goes with your philosophy because you're drawing light from the darkness oh my goodness i never thought of that thank um, you for that ah uh, yes of course <laughs> i'm all giddy over here now <laughs> yeah yeah true Yeah, it's really, um, it's fun. And I, as an artist, I try to challenge myself by learning something new every year and taking on a new, just either going to class or actually just diving in and trying a new technique or a a new medium or a new approach to things. And that's how I got into the, the black gesso canvas. It was, I just need to continue to always be a student. Yeah. I will never be a master of painter of mm-hmm. painting. I'll never be a master at life, but um, I just really wanted to. Um, I just want to continue to learn. 
because you can get set in your ways. And that's what a lot of people say about my paintings. They're like, Toral, your paintings are never the same. And I, well, first of all, I'm not the same person yeah. as I, each day. And secondly, I get bored really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> and then I also, I want to continue to, to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm just I'm like sitting into your paintings now. I'm like looking at your your work and um, in my head, and and I was thinking about your um, the different series then that you have. So you, but you are you developed these series like from just evolved from like learning something new feeling it out and then knowing that these sort of go into these template places yes, right so right. your um what did you call it? divine ambiguity am- ambiguity yeah so that was for 2020 um but going back to 2019 um i did a series uh called my wallflower series where i did a play on the world the word wallflower when you think about a wallflower in society it's a standoff and kind of could fade into the woodwork and we don't they are they're kind of on the edges of our awareness sure and i took that and applied that concept of wallflower to endangered species and uh, looking at the fact that we have we are every day losing species, Mm -hmm. uh, not just of animals, but of of plant life as well. Right. Um, That somehow they needed to be celebrated on canvas. So I did a wallflower series where I went, and I secretly, I have a, an affection for vintage wallpaper. I <laughs> love it. I yeah. haven't put it on my walls because I know how hard it is to get off, but I know. But I, I harbor have, a secret. They have list. sticky ones now. They've because so many people do love vintage wallpaper. You can stick it on and then peel it off. Yeah, They're yeah. Super expensive. Super. I, like, yeah. I need to sell a lot of paintings to be able to do that because I would be changing my house every day. Right. I think because I'm different every day. I'd be like, yeah, oh, that doesn't work. So, um, but anyway, I. Uh, um, so the wallflower series, you know, I did elephants and giraffes and orangutans. And there was just, unfortunately, when I was starting to do my homework on it, there were just too many species to be able to pick from. So, yeah. um, so that was the 2019. And then when 2020 came along, I still wasn't ready to let go of my wallpaper. And yeah. I still wasn't, and I still, but, and I was motivated to celebrate people that were suffering. And Absolutely. So, and I did a, yeah. I did a homeless woman. Um, so yeah, so it was kind of just the the next step for me to take in that series. Gotcha. So I love that it's like a branch of that, like that that sort of evolved into that. Yeah, and it was it was a natural evolution as I think about animals that were suffering. Humans suffer too, and you know yeah. it's like when we look at animals. It's something that tugs on our heartstring, but we could look at a homeless person on the street and just continue to walk by. If that was a dog, you would probably pick it up and put it in your car. So welcome back to Mead Community Radio. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. In the act. (laughs) Hi, I'm Erica Hunsinger, and this is In the Act on Mead Community Radio. And our guest today is Toral Fisher. Thanks for being with us, Toral. I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Erica. Thanks for um, extending our, our talk about and, and uh, diving into some of these things a little bit, um, I appreciate your reflecting on them and, and your energy towards it. So it's uh, really fun. So you on our right before our break, we were talking about um, the endangered animals and that there were too many from your research mm-hmm. to, to actually paint them all. And of the, course, that um, and then the connection to um, 
the next series that you were doing um, and um, yeah, and then right, and then you were talking <laughs> about the funny, funny rich people and their pets. Yeah, wealthy so humans. So wealthy and their humans and their pets. pets. <laughs> so <laughs> pets are wonderful. They're oh, yeah. great things to have. I yeah. emotional support animals. I'm all for that, but I don't know. I just don't. I don't want to be too opinionated here. We could do that later. <laughs> <laughs> but when I see an animal with a rhinestone collar or having a stroller and the doggy <laughs> daycare for executive pets, I just, I, and I know that, and I know humans are struggling and there's so much, so much, I don't want to say wrong, but so many things that need attention and money. I just kind of roll my eyes at it. I, you know, yeah. I don't get angry. I just kind of roll my eyes at it because I, I want to um, – priorities. I guess everybody has their own priorities. Uh, but And I didn't want to be judgy. I just wanted to kind of <laughs> just kind of throw it out there as a, a humorous kind of play on those choices. Yeah. And so I find – animals and I dress them up in these really crazy outfits, sunglasses and You mean animals uh, like on canvas. Oh, okay. I'm painting them on canvas okay. and I put sunglasses on them or some bling or <laughs> um I or some Victorian collars and what have you. Right. And I put them with their servant human. <laughs> <laughs> They're servant human. It's really good. Yeah. And I come up with all these crazy names for them. And they, you know how they say when you spend a lot of time with an you pick an animal that kind of matches you or kind of you maybe pick a partner that matches you Yeah, as well. right. So I kind of have some similar um, uh, concept between the, the relatability between the, the, the human and the animal. And the funny thing was is... Oh my gosh, I hope this particular individual wouldn't ever listen to this show. But <laughs> I was kind of picking on this one person and they came into my art booth and bought them all. <laughs> I love that. Well, then they must see the humor and I sweetness in it so. as well, I right? Mean, it's fine if it spoke to that person, yeah. it spoke to that person. Totally. But I just didn't. I laughed my the rest of the afternoon because um, <laughs> I was kind of making fun of that individual specifically. <laughs> Well, it's very much like um, like commentary, like the cartoons in the yeah, New York, yeah. in the New Yorker, yeah, exactly, or exactly. you know that kind of right. And I'm not hating satirist. on anybody. I'm just saying, just I mean, I'm just trying to be humorous and you know, and and a little bit eye opening. Some people just like the paintings, so yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and then, yeah, and then moving into just more comedy, I find the facial expressions of children are just extraordinary and so real and so raw. So I have this one painting of this boy who's very upset, and he's maybe three years old, and he has red hair, and and his uh, he has another pet, I can't remember, but it's called No More Cookies for You. Kind of like at that moment when the dog and the kid learn that there's no more treats. <laughs> when the dog and the kid learn. <laughs> and then I, I have a girl with po ponytails, and, she has, and she's next to a, a tabby cat. And they're very upset, both of them. And that one is called Bath Time. Because, you know, cats would never want to take a bath. Right. So, and then I, I back these up in a, like a crushed gold leaf background. And I, I frame them with a gold frame. So, yeah, it's kind of oh my gosh. opulent, I guess. That's fantastic. Yes, it's really What do you fun. mean by crushed gold leaf? You, not leaf, flattened leaf? But right. So I'm taking the gold leaf. You can actually buy it pre-crushed if you wish. I, and it, gold leaf is so easy to break. I mean, you 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 breathe wrong and it flies away. So right. I just take it and I just rub it in my hands. And then when I put down the the glue on the canvas, the 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 gilding glue, um, I'm just literally just rubbing the gold leaf into the canvas, and it gives oh. this really nice textural kind of finish to it. Oh, cool! Yeah, wow. yeah, kind of like hand squeezed uh, avocados, you know. <laughs> Right. <laughs> guacamole. You know, they say it was it hand pressed guacamole. I have hand pressed gold leaf now. <laughs> nice. I love that. 
<laughs> I should charge more for that. <laughs> right. Do you charge more? No. Yeah. Okay. Just question. <laughs> I'm always curious. Right. It's always fun. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you, so do you have, I mean, when you're, you're like, I'm always learning, I'm always exploring, like, do you, are these, um, series do they happen like every like do you decide like 2019 I'm gonna do this oh, series no. and 2000 no and they do they have an end date like can you keep making them and like put them back into a series like how flexible are you within that or oh they- I'm super flexible with that if it needs to continue to come out of me I'm I'm not gonna stop it because then right. I'm not being true to who I am right you know um no I it, definitely not. I mean, there's always going to be commentary on animals and humans, and I'll just continue to perpetuate the series as I as I wish. Yeah, you know, I, it's what's the beauty of being an artist is like I, I wake up and I'm like, um, I want to paint an ostrich today, so I do. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's really quite lovely. And yeah. so, do you? Is your process that you have? Um, canvases ready or do you build them then like I'm going to make an ostrich and so now I need a vertical canvas and I'm going to build it myself and wrap it and like do you do it from scratch do you how do you what's your so that yeah so my process I used to do all that from scratch um, but in 2019 I decided I was going to become a full-time artist and which was a really bad year in hindsight because COVID hit. <laughs> right. And last year was a struggle. Um, but I, ca- I produce two to three paintings a week, Erica, because I have to. Yeah. Because it pay- art is paying my bills now, which I'm not complaining. But um, so there's some point where I have to say, I just shouldn't be doing this anymore. I should be paying for somebody else to do this. So I actually buy pre-stretched canvases now. Yeah. Because it, it doesn't make any sense in my time yep. and the, my method to actually do that. Now, with regard to prepping canvases, I know a lot of artists who can paint more than one painting at once, and I'm not that person. Huh. I give it my all. I put myself into it. And even if I need to take a break from it for a while, I it would be like cheating. <laughs> I couldn't put my attention on another canvas. I just huh. sit with it, and I'm in that process of thinking about it, or I'll go for a run, or I'll go, you know, take a nap or, you know, do what I need to do to figure out what's not working with a painting um, before I will start another one. I, I'm from, I'm all in from start to finish. Wow. Yeah. I love that. It's it probably would be good for me to try and change another way because I feel like, um, I don't know, I'm all in. I guess I am a loyal dog yeah. to that canvas, so... <laughs> That. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> That's a, it's such a, I mean, I think that writers do that maybe more, or um, I'm trying to think of other, like, create, like they work on a project. Well, I imagine a potter would a have potter. to, they would make a commitment to throwing a pot and they've got it going. They've got to get it, either toss it or right. start or crush it and start over. Right. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And it, there's paint on my palette that I should be using if I'm stuck, but I don't. Yeah. You know, and I and waste is a hard part for me, you know, because the economy of being an artist is challenging, right? It's challenging to mm-hmm. be an artist. Um, and I look at that wasted paint, and I'm like, I should just have a little, like a trash canvas where I just throw paint on, because, but I, I'm mm-hmm. committed to this piece. So, But I'm very, very um, careful about how much paint I put out. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's like, it's a little bit like energy too. It's like how much, you know, your focus is this. So you're paying attention to those. You're being very thoughtful about how you're interacting with it. Mm -hmm. I have a plan, typically. I mean, when I sit down in front of a canvas, I have a plan. I set out all of my colors. I know what my palette's going to be. And I rarely deviate from that. So yeah, I do. I sit down with a a vision, with something in mind. 
Yeah. And then do you draw it out? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. And sometimes when I, even when I draw it out, which I use like a white watercolor pencil. Oh, sure. On my black canvas. Shows up really nice. But there's oftentimes I just paint right over those lines because right. I, it's not working for me. Uh, I change my mind at that moment compositionally. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Or you, so or you lick the watercolor with your thumb and your finger. You right. know, you know, make sure you don't have a mask on because you know, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Try and blow something yeah, off. Exactly. Remote, but, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how that works for me. Um, and I, can, I was wondering if we could maybe backtrack a tiny bit um, when you said you you decided that you were going to become an, an artist in 2019. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about um, what your life choices were that kind of led you to that place? Sure. Um, did you have, you know, whatever? Well, gosh, kind of like, as I said earlier, <laughs> where I uh, am not the same person every day. When I yeah. wake up, I'm a different person. I have have had the privilege, and I use that word specifically, it is a privilege, to change my mind as to who I want to be in my career. Um, and and taking, taking a lot of different – I'm like beta 6.2 right now for Toral Fisher. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's been a lot of different things. I've been able to try on a lot of different me's, um, everything from – um, I was an HR executive. Wow. Um, I was. Uh, uh, I oversaw all the food and funds in the f for the Food Bank Council of Michigan um, wow. during the economic uh, recession. Uh, that was a crazy time. I was a farmer, wow. an organic uh, produce farmer. I used to work on at a community radio station, and. Um, I guess when it really came down to it, there were two things that came together for me to take that leap of faith. Number one, I have the most amazing husband who believes in me. Mm. And I've had other husbands before who um, didn't really give me that space to fly. And um, But my husband, Drew, has been, if this is what brings you joy, let's just do this. And I think I needed somebody to kind of like, not in a, not a safety net, but just that emotional kind of push. Like, I got you. We mm -hmm. got this. Let's go. And the other part is more practical. Farming uh, was what I was doing before in the Driftless region in Viroqua, Wisconsin. Um, farming is tough. Made oh, me a better, yeah. made me a better painter. Um, but, um, Farming is such an unpredictable thing, and you're out in the fields 15-hour days, and at the end of the year, as you add up your receipts, you're still in debt. And so we were doing farming and fine art shows throughout the country, and then there was this one, it was in Minneapolis, there was one show where uh, my husband was adding up our receipts for the weekend, and he said to me, very simply, he's like, Toro, you made more money this weekend than we do in 20 weeks of farming, which is really easy to do because we don't make any money right. in 20 weeks of farming. Yeah. He's like, well, which one brings you more joy? And I said, both. Yeah. So we continued that path of farming and doing art shows on weekends. And I don't know about your exposure to farming, but leaving your farm alone for 48 hours is like leaving a toddler in the house for 48 hours, you come back and it's just chaos. Wow. You know, everything had, things have died, things have, weeds have seeded, etc. cetera. Um, wow. And then. That's a tie. It was that crazy. Link. It yeah. was crazy. I, but um, farming made me a better artist because I'm, I was so in tune with the, the, the life cycle of. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. The, the cool thing about farming is you, you've got birth, yep. you've got sex, and you got death. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the interplay of temperature, yeah. of moisture, and the colors. And you watch that full life cycle all the way around intimately, and you are on your hands and knees watching that happen daily. And it's just brilliant. It's oh. absolutely astounding, and it's magnificent. 
And um, to try and capture that on a canvas was such a challenge. And um, yeah. so I would, I was farming in during you know May through October, and we had uh, season extension hoop houses. So sometimes into November. I remember one year our last harvest was Christmas Day, um, but then during the December through you know March, I was painting. Yeah. And trying to capture what I was seeing out in the fields, um, so. But the so the impetus was more for becoming a full time artist was um, was a dream that my husband said let's go. Yeah, and it was also a practical choice for us financially, which sounds crazy, right? But farming. Farmers are rock stars. God bless them. Oh my gosh, they're rock stars. Shout and I, yeah. I'm actually having PTSD right now because of the current weather that we're having. We're in a drought right now. Right. Yep. And I am just so I'm just overwhelmed by what these farmers are going through. I mean, think about June. We had those dates that there was a freezing, and then the yep. very next week, 96 degrees. Right. And those plants are compromised and Absolutely. disease can set in and they can die and it just uh I, it's such anyway. a fragile it is um fragile thing yeah. to take care of that line between beauty and chaos exists in everything right absolutely yeah right so anyway so um that was how i took that leap of faith and when we moved to sheboygan uh, we specifically moved to sheboygan because we found this beautiful building uh, that had all this amazing filtered light through gl glass bricks. And um, I think when I painted my first painting in the, our building in Sheboygan, I should call it a home now because it's our home. <laughs> We're making it a home. Um, I cried. The light was amazing. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Hi, this is In the Act with Erica Hunsinger. We're talking with Toral Fisher today. And we were just talking about the farm that you were on. And how long did you have the farm for then? We uh, we owned the farm. Uh, it's actually in Lafarge, Wisconsin, but Viroqua was the largest um, town to us. Um, we were there for eight years. Wow. Long enough to know that uh, it's very hard work. Yeah, right. Yeah. So um, I love having these, these, all these like iterations of Toral. <laughs> like I was <laughs> at HR, scary. and I'm like, what? Yeah. You were doing what? Oh, yeah, I was also in the military. Oh. I know. Wow. I know. Just drop that on the floor. Boom. Wait, I know. You were in the military then too? What <laughs> yeah. What branch of the military? I was in the army. In the army. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't talk about that very often. It's like, it's such an old part of me, but... It right. was a means to an end. We paid sure. for college. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, um, like, as a child or growing up in your teens, were you drawing? Were you interested in art? Did you have this, like, as an undercurrent through your life? Or what was – where did where did the um, – I'm a painter pop-up kind of thing. Yeah. I was always a very expressive child. I believe it. I wasn't necessarily drawn to making things with my hands. I was probably drawn to making messes more than I was to making anything sure, process artful. process is fun. And um, I moved all the time. I never sat still. And um, I had a mother who was a creator um, who would... And a dreamer. And I'm grateful for that, looking back at it, because she allowed me to dream, too. Wow. And she uh, would do art uh, from found objects, and she always insisted that we always color. So I think uh, I'm positive I got the interest of art, not necessarily as an occupation, but as something that um, was therapeutic. Sure. And a good way for to make Toral sit down. 
<laughs> which is not easy. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If they could only see me, I'm doing laps in this studio right now. <laughs> right. I'm on the ceiling. On the ceiling. Come on down. <laughs> Stay there. It's fine. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I definitely got that from my mother, and I appreciate her more um, than she has since passed. But, um, yeah, that's where that came from for wow. sure. Do you have some of her pieces, though? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, lots of driftwood and beach glass and, I mean, everything. So, Wow. Yeah. Uh, do you remember when you began painting? I, there was a moment. So I went to school, believe it or not, on a pre-med track. I was going to be a doctor. I, I know. See that. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah. And, um, and I got to um, organic chemistry, mm -hmm. and my brain just blew up. I couldn't manage it. And I went to my um, advisor at the time, and they're like, this is the course that weeds everybody out. So huh. I guess you're out. I'm like, oh. I guess I'm out. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So I was going through a little bit of a, a crisis, not knowing. I always identified myself as I wanted to be a healer. I wanted to be involved in, in, in helping people heal and, and wellness. And um, I remember calling my mother and saying, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And she's like, Toral, what brings you joy? Because this is one of the times in your life where – someone's not going to tell you what to do. Granted, if you want a degree, we support that. But what brings you joy? And I'm like, art. She goes, well, then go study that for a while. Wow. And I did. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I had no plans to make a living off of it or from it. I just knew um, for some reason I needed to check that box and have that pedigree of a degree, which you know, makes no sense, really. But that was what I was told to do. And, you know, when you're 17, 18 years old, you do that. Right. But I got my degree in, in my bachelor in fine arts. Wow. Yeah. Far, far, far cry from being um, a, a medical doctor. But but the ideas, um, again, that philosophy is that that current line that runs through all of that is that that um, he, being a healer, you know, wanting to be a healer and um, um, finding things that bring you joy and to share joy with others and having that, you know, that seems to run as themes in your paintings, though, too. I would like to think so. I mean, people ask me, what's your, you know, your, whenever you apply to a show or you um, do, re you respond to a call for artists, you're supposed to do your artist statement. Yeah. And I find that to be just a bunch of fluff. Yeah. So, so I usually say I really don't have a statement other than I want to provoke mm -hmm. and I want to bring joy. Yeah. And I want to celebrate this human condition and this planetary experience. That's it. That's all I want. So I don't really have a statement other than if my... What that does, is their statement. I'm basically asking people, what does my art bring to you? Understanding that everybody is going to connect with my art. That's just not how it works. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 So sometimes I want to be provocative. Sometimes I want to be soothing. Sometimes I want to put the word fun back in the in dysfunction. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's a shake up. Like that's yeah. a that's yeah. a great way to shake it up then too. Yeah. And that yeah. sort of um, you know, which makes me think of like then going for a run to like shake it up and mm -hmm. to get into that flow and that the flow is so important for these healthy actions or reactions to happen. Right. Right? Like right. that um, it's such an elemental part of, of the creative process mm -hmm. is to try and find that flow. Right. And you can't force it. And no. then once you realize you're in it, you're out of it. Yeah. In some no, ways, that's too. That's so true. <laughs> that's so true. I know. It's like I, when I wake up in the morning, I need to move. Yeah. I'm not usually touching my canvas till about mm, 1 p.m. In the afternoon. Okay. And then I flow till about 11 p.m. I just, uh, it just takes me time. Like I need to, you know, move and get all these things, all this other clutter out of my way, pay bills, clean, do laundry, et cetera, whatever. And that's all done before 1 p.m.? 
um, in the afternoon. Not, I can't say every I mean, day, but yeah, but typically, mostly, yeah, typically, yeah. And then you paint from one until eleven, almost. Almost every day. Oh my gosh! I paint almost every day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That yeah. is shocking. <laughs> Well, it feels weird on a day that I don't paint, to be honest with you. It's gotten to that point. If I'm not painting, it feels awkward. I feel like I've missed the opportunity to express myself, right? Right. So. Yeah. 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 I just finished up a commission last night. It was probably the most challenging commission I've ever done. Tell me about it. Oh, Mm. Or yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a, 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 a man who is a, a collector of mine. He has four other pieces and he has a very um, he lives in a, um, a high rise building. It has very minimal wall space. Yeah. So the fact that when he connected to me, I'm like, are you sure you really need a new piece? And he's like, yes, I'm sure. Because I know that space is so, so premium there and coveted. And uh He is going through a process of learning about himself. He's in his uh, early 40s, and he is reconnecting to the um, his sacred activism, which I believe is. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Sacred activism to me is when you hear about something on the news or you read about something and it pisses you off. Yeah. That's your soul talking to you that you need to take some steps, no matter how big or small, to address that, maybe through volunteerism. Maybe it would make you change your entire life. But Mm -hmm. when you hear about that and your blood boils or you weep, that is your soul saying, this is not right. And I believe you should respond to that call. And he's going through that right now. And when he was a little boy, he uh, read... Alice Walker's The Color Purple. Mm -hmm. And that book has stuck with him, and that message of feminism has stuck with him and is now starting to emerge within him that he needs to do something about this. He needs to become involved. So he actually challenged me. He's like, okay, Toral, I want you to reconnect with this book, and I want you to paint anything you want with the exception of one request. I need you to put a hammer in the painting. And I said, well, what is the hammer representing? He's like, it's smashing the patriarchy. Wow. And I'm just like, how would one do, a, and he wants it to be beautiful. Yeah. So how does one do a beautiful painting in, in which you're smashing something, but yet also has to be reflective of this body of work? Right. And I, as a silly person, as I always, I said, sure. <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, I can do yes. that. Yes. <laughs> I can do that. So that was one where actually in the afternoons I wasn't painting. I was actually reading passages about from Alice Walker. I was reading how impactful the movie was and the book was at the time. I was reading things about um, uh, what – the color purple, the actual color purple meant in within the context of feminism. And mm-hmm. that took me a week of just incubating uh, the energy around his request. Right. And I finished it last night. I finished the painting last night. Wow. And I, um, I texted him. And I, I'm probably going to cry. He called me right away and he started crying. He's like, I can't believe you did it. He's like, this is so beautiful. And he's like, it's everything that I need right now. Wow. And um, yeah, he's so, yeah. So and he's going to pick it up. Um, I have an art show um, in Geneva, Illinois this summer. He's going to pick it up then. So, but that to me is when I feel my, my happiest is when my piece of work ch- not necessarily changes somebody's life, but answers a question mm-hmm. or provides an outlet or soothes their soul, or maybe discomforts you in a way that you'll take action. Because I believe this painting soothes him, but it also discomforts him at the same time. Sure. And so, yeah, that I have to be careful when I say yes. <laughs> I've taken on another commission. This wonderful man wanted to surprise his wife with a painting of where he proposed to her. 
And I was, I'm like, yes, you know, I want to be a part of that, of course. <laughs> and it, and then he showed me where it was. <laughs> and as I get back in our previous conversation, I say, I don't like to draw straight lines. I find that they're too, I don't know, they're just too fixed. And in nature, they don't really exist very often. Um, it was this amazingly challenging, highly evolved bridge in Germany. <laughs> I, and I, when I finally presented it to him, I said, if I ever become famous, there's like four other pictures of that bridge underneath these. <laughs> right. So I do know. have to be careful with what I say yes to. Yeah. Um, but they were quite happy with the with the outcome of this bridge. But whew, I had to do a, there was a lot of running miles in between that way. Oh, so I bet. I just couldn't do it. And that so. process of like bouncing between the two uh, like not between the two paintings, but between yourself, the painting, the idea, yeah. that steeping period of time, like getting back to reading the book. And yeah. like, like I think of it as almost like adding tea ingredients, right? you know, and like letting it steep to see like what's going to come out yes, and exactly. how, um, how it then emerges, right, right from that darkness too, yeah. right? Yeah. So because you're painting with the, on on the, black. The on black. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's, um, it's a part. Commissions are challenging. I say yes to them. I think I've said get no to one. Yeah. Um, but I say yes to them because I, but I, I also appreciate when people just like this, this one collector did, he's like, just go, whatever comes out and not knowing what he needed. And right. that's the best kind of commission is trusting you, you're trusting me. Exactly. It's like mm -hmm. when someone's going to cook for you, they're like, I'm going to make a pasta dish, but they're not telling you what shape they want the pasta to be. Right. Or what kind of sauce, you know, they're right. not tell you, you're cooking for this person. Yeah. And when I paint, I'm cooking for somebody. Yeah. They might not like it. So, and that's, uh, I, I, that happens, I would imagine. Yes. You know, I, probably have done a couple of commissions where the people are like, yeah, almost it's okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. You can't hit it. And, you know, right. it's like out of the, you know, if I'm painting two to three paintings a week at the end of a, a year, I'm painting hundreds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I can tell you that there are some that aren't so great. <laughs> you know, they're just, they're just not great. Um, but there's a couple every, I would say probably about six a year that I go, yeah, there it is. Uh, and I don't know how that happens. There's just a flow. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just goes with any craft, I would imagine. Yep. You know, there's a football player that, you know, has a good day or a runner that has a great a great race. The perfect golf swing. Exactly. That, like, and you the don't, sauce yeah, that's just right. Yeah, exactly. The sound that just, the improvisational sounds. Or, or the knitter or the crocheter with the right... Oh, yes. The right stitch. Right. Right. So, <laughs> you know, it, it just it just flows some days. Yeah. And there's other days it doesn't. So. And every day is a new day. Every day is different. I always, you know, I, I really quickly, I was, um, I took my running very seriously um, up until a point where I was attacked by some pit bulls and I could have died there. And I was injured, and I was never, ever going to run the same again. But now I look back at those dogs, and I say, thank you. Because through that process, like, I look at, like, I used to race, and I, like, looked at my split. I don't even wear a watch anymore when I run. I look at my split times and go, oh, I'm a loser, you know. And then it's just like, and then after that dog attack, I was just like, what am I doing this for? And now I do it because... It's just who I am. It's my meditation time. It's my me time. And I would have never had that mindset had I not been, you know, mauled by a dog. Right. Wow. So I'm grateful for that. And I can say thank you, you know, wow. to those dick dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so taking that agitation and, yeah. and looking at that as, as something that is a, it's a building block. Right. Sure. And granted, some people just continue to be agitated and it just seems so unfair. Well, uh, I think know. that so much of it too is what support system that you have around you. Of course. And like how, what options have been allowed for you. Yes. Um, to be able to create a, 
a different way, like to know that there could potentially be a different potential you. Right. But, but you're only ready to do that when you, when, when you're ready. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you you can just continue to just get hit, you know, smacking your head up against the wall. Yeah. And if you're not ready, I believe in my woo woo way is that you could come back and do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you didn't learn anything. You didn't. I you think didn't of it as that. a spiral instead of a circle. Okay. Because you're, because we're in this life, like because our life is, we're different every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. We might encounter the same thing. We might make the same choice at this, about the same thing, but we're not in the same situation. And it's more like a spiral than okay. it is like a circle, circle. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because you're shifting. Right. Everything's shifting. Right. Right. There's always potential for that. Yeah. I'm Love so that. lucky to be an artist. I really am. I pinch myself every day. Someone the other day goes, what time do you get up? And I'm like, whenever I want to. <laughs> That's such a privilege. Yeah. You know? And if I'm up early and I'm running and I look at all these people driving to work, nobody's smiling. And I want them. It's like, it just breaks my heart. I was that person once. Yeah. You know? So, um, and some people go to work and not smiling, but then and then they probably love their job. I can't throw, you know, broadcast my thoughts upon them. But I'm I choose to work for myself, and I take the risks that financially that go along with that. Because there's a lot of things I just don't paint every day. I try to, but before noon, I'm doing taxes. Mm-hmm. I'm doing books, I'm doing social media, I'm, you know, I'm applying for a show or applying for a request, for a call for artists, etc. So there's a lot on the back end that people don't appreciate. I'm buying, you know, bags to ship or boxes to ship or I'm shipping or I'm working with a client or what have you. So there's a lot of stuff and, you know, um, that I, it's not the pearl of the work. The pearl of the work is being able to actually put the color on the, the canvas. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, but that organization is so integral. For it is, and a lot allowing of allowing for the have it. <laughs> flow to have. It's tr- you have to really train yourself. You I do. Think. You have yeah. to be very disciplined about it, and I think that's maybe where um, um, that part of being an HR executive or in the military that those skills and mindset and discipline has come into um, actually has come to benefit me because I'm on time. A lot of artists aren't on time. I'm on time. You know, yeah. if I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. If I, if I set up a meeting, I'm going to be there. And right. a, a lot of artists kind of, you know, and I understand how you can totally get lost in your work, but people are like, you're not typical. And I'm like, well, I have been so many different persons before. So, right. yeah. And there's lots of different kinds of artists. Yes, there right. are for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. How can people get a hold of you? What is your contact information? Um, so they can go to my website and there's a, like a little messaging thing on there. So if they go to my website and they want to contact me, it says contact artist on there. Okay. Is that the easiest one for and you to read? And that's toralart.com? Yeah. So T-O-R-I-L-A-R-T dot com? Right. Okay. Yeah. There's email. and There's a whole bunch of ways, but they can find me on Facebook and Instagram and message me through there as well. Thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure to have you and talk with you about your life and your work and your philosophies and everything. Well, it was a pleasure to be with you. And um, I'm so grateful that uh, the library has this for the community, this radio. It's amazing. And everything that Mead does for for the people of Sheboygan County and Sheboygan is, um, I'm grateful for it. So thanks for inviting me to be a part of it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. In the Act is produced in the studios at Mead Public Library in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. More information on the web at meadpl.org.